I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. So over the years coming down here with Rick, we've always dabbled a little bit in, in a little raccoon calling, and it's usually just kind of we always call it a morale booster. Middle of the day, we're we're uh, you know struggling calling coyotes, so we call it a raccoon here and there. We've been doing a little coon episode here and there and shooting a coon or two, but Jeff, being an out-of-stater, was always on the sideline and this and that. And he'd, we'd talked about it before, and he decided to buy a Kansas fur harvester out-of-state non-resident license, and we were going to whack some coons. And when I was back, when I was down here in November, we decided, you know, it'd be fun to come out here before the fur bear season ended and do nothing but pretty much call raccoons for a full day and see what we could do. And I, I like doing it anyway, and it's a blast. So what I decided to do was pull out my old Matthews and I'll try to shoot one with a bow. That way I ain't taking, you know, he spent a lot of money to buy that license and that way I've shot a plenty of them anyway myself. So I wanted him to, you know, be able to be the main shooter and I knew if I was sitting there with a shotgun it was going to be a who shoots first kind of, we kind of have a tendency to do that anyway and I like to see him run over the call for some reason I really like that as well so I decide I'm going to shoot him try to shoot one I would just be happy to stick one with a bow so we're switching gears a little bit we kind of had this planned out that we were going to hunt coyotes for the first you know maybe two three hours of the day when the conditions are usually a little bit better, coyotes are on the move. And then during this middle four or five hours of the day, we're gonna try to call in as many raccoons as we can. Rick's gonna try to get one with his bow. I'm gonna back him up with the rifle here. Bunch of old buildings, we snuck right in within about 40, 50 yards of these old buildings. And he's just gonna fire up the coon, raccoon distress on there, play it as loud as he can. We're gonna sit here for just a couple minutes and then on to the next spot. See him sitting right in there? Just shoot him. Nice shot. Come right at the call. I, did, I didn't know, I need to be straight on. I don't know where to lead, I can't lead that much. <laughs> and he went the wrong way for me. I was had my gun slamming into the fence. I couldn't. <laughs> well, that was pretty funny anyway. <laughs> God. I don't know where my air, I almost <laughs> shot the call, I think. <laughs> bet, no, bet nobody never shot an arrow in a roughneck before. <laughs> <sighs> Need the shotgun on that one. That thing must have fresh shot all up underneath all this. See it? Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah, good. I only got three. I don't know. I didn't know if that one was going to come or not. No, that's exactly what I would have done there. Yeah. Well, the ones we're looking for was like the second one. <laughs> I thought I was going to be the hero there, whiffed it. Man, I just don't, I'm like, where do I lead? I didn't really put it in front of him, I just kind of put it on his head. 
So obviously you can find raccoons about anywhere. Obviously out west it's not as easy, but when you get to the Midwest and east, you got lots of trees, lots of bottoms, uh, lots and lots of raccoons. And, and really what you're looking for when we're, we're making these specific raccoon stands is several things. We're looking for a big brush pile, maybe where somebody cleared out an area of land and they piled all the dead trees up into a big pile. Um, we're looking for big cottonwood trees with holes in them, whether you look for a branch that maybe broke off and it's hollowed out in the inside, you may see, a, see an obvious hole up in the tree that the coons could be living in there. Um, and the third thing we're looking for is old abandoned houses, old abandoned buildings, um, big junk piles, anything where these coons are just laid up during the day. Mm-hmm. Don't move. Come on. Shoot him. I don't know, man. That's <laughs> this stuff is exciting. We're on the way back from a coyote stand. The truck's just right here. We're like, hey, there's a couple big cottonwoods. We didn't see any den holes up in there, but we thought, what the heck? But there's a big brush pile right here. When I can't, when I suck at calling coyotes, I just go find some coons. <laughs> they. I don't know why it works so good, but they like to fight. We put the roughneck in the little limb right there because I've I've had them like jump three feet off the ground and just grab onto the call before, so I thought that'd be kind of funny. But he didn't make it there, but I'll bet we get some here in the next couple of days to run over the roughneck. You know, not every raccoon's gonna come running to the call just like coyotes, some are more aggressive than others, you know, and, uh, but the ones that you get to come down the tree or off the, off the brush pile or out of the house and come to the call, it is just, it's so exciting to watch because they just run the call right over before they realize, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. Him again. There you go. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I think I split his bottom open. <laughs> Can we show him? Huh? I think so. <laughs> I know I seen fur fly off when my arrow went through there. I heard him come out of the bit. Did you hear him? <clears throat> no. I heard him come out of there. He growled or something up there. <laughs> Did he run over the call yeah. while I shot him? Yeah, he was right on it. <laughs> Dang it. I wish I'd have stuck him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna call that a win because it didn't <laughs> drill him. <clears throat> he came charging down the hill right at us. He didn't even let me draw. I seen him look at me too. <laughs> God dang it. Must have shot him. I must have just peeled underneath of him. So a little just a little bit about these setups, you know. Coon calling something guys been doing for a hundred years. I mean, it's oh, yeah, it it's nothing new. Nope. Um, all we're doing is we're getting close as we can. I mean, we're like 30, 40, 50 yards tops from where we think the raccoons are gonna be and just setting the call out in front of us a little bit, tucking in, finding a little bit of cover. I don't think you have to be as well hit as coyotes. I mean, no, huh? um, but- no. Uh, they, and, they will smell you and they will pick you out, especially the ones that climb out of the trees. If, and I think they out. got a better, like a bird's view. Yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll, I see, I see that they pick us out and they get out of there. But and then all you're doing is going to the <clears> raccoon <throat> folder, and that was a raccoon distress number two seems to be yep. the favorite one, and that's, just that's the one I, I don't even just play cranking another it. One. You can't blow them out. I mean, you're you're ripping it. Yeah, I had that thing on 32, and it run over the call <laughs> yeah. after an arrow went kind of <laughs> skidded through it. I know, I'm sure I hit it. Somebody tell me I hit it. <laughs> I kind of just shaved under it and. Then we got over there on the river, and I thought I'm gonna—I need to give more lead. I'm not leading them enough. So, and when you're looking through that peep, tracking them, you—you you can't tell what's to the right or anything. You're just seeing your peep and your pin, and over here to the left. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> 
That's you could call her him. <laughs> I think I heard it hit the call. Huh? I think you hit the call. I kind of do think I hit the call. I thought I hit him too, but he flew up in the air kind of funky, didn't he? Boy, I just can't figure out the lead on them things. <laughs> Man, that could, he came from a long way. He picked it up. A, he put it in fourth gear he when did. he got he, about he right. He came over that little thing. He growled. And <laughs> well, I'm glad we walked across this half a mile muddy slop deal to do that. There's your arrow stuck clear down there. I can I see, see it. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. He put. <laughs> You got it pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, jeez. I didn't know. We're looking through the peep. I can't tell where the freaking call is. It's still going to work, but you sliced her pretty good. Let's make sure it does work. It, well, it was working there after it flipped yeah. over. Man, I got the freaking shakes. I wanted to kill that thing so bad. Yeah, it just broke the plastic on the speaker. Yeah, we're oh, good. Oh, yeah. It's like brand new. It's a war wound. <laughs> Took a two and a half inch rage right up its gut. Let's shoot right over the top of them on this one. Looks like a trench. I'm only about five yards. It just blew a trench right through this branch. I mean, he ain't, this is not even that big of a coon, man. He was mean. And it was all perfect. And then I closed my left eye and was looking through that peep. I thought he had another 10 yards to go before he got to the call. So I'm trying to come up with a couple more coon spots. And I, I start thinking about this one where Mike, the, a couple of years ago, the two coons were right behind him and run around the front of him and went back. And one of them almost seemed like it touched him even. So I, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I've called quite a few coons there. Let's go try that one. and did the same old, you know, I love the coon distress too on the lucky duck calls. That's my go-to. It's really the only one I ever use. He's sticking on it. Is that a different one? That's a different one. He ran into the hole right there. Where there he is, right there. Zoinked out? Yeah, he's about halfway in there. <laughs> Make sure he's dead. Oh, yeah, he looks. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get him. He's right there. <laughs> okay, pull me out, Jeffy. <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> About exactly where I was aiming when nice, he was standing. Nice, man. Wasn't he standing up? <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we did it. That thing come right up on that log right there. Ooh, he wanted. To, he couldn't see the call with all that brush. Probably he good. popped up. What was that? About 20 yards. Yep. Boom. Standing I one. The black one at the freaking call, but that's all right. <laughs> Pretty cool. That was awesome. Whew. All right, let's go call in a couple coyotes. 
So you can specifically make stands for raccoons, and obviously you can make a lot, especially if you, you know, you can get on your Onyx map and you can drop pins wherever you find a den hole in a tree, wherever you find a brush pile, and then as you're traveling around looking at different things, whether you're hunting something else or hunting coyotes, you start marking all these on your Onyx maps. Then when you finally get a day or a midday section where you want to go call raccoons, you can pull that up and track through all that. But another thing you can do is at the end of a coyote stand, um, if, if you think there's some trees or some brush within 100 yards of maybe where you're calling coyotes, at the very end of the stand, it doesn't hurt to play raccoon distress number two for a couple minutes because multiple times when I've been hunting with Rick, um, late after a coyote stand, he's fired up the coon distress and we've had raccoons coming run, running right in. On this particular stand, we had, we had actually made a coyote stand and Rick knew there was two big cottonwoods clear down at the end of the pasture, about 150 yards. And the plan was to make a coyote stand and then run down and make a quick coon stand by the trees. But once we got on stand, the light was fading on us too fast. So he felt we just didn't have time to pick up and move down. So he just elected to roll into some coon distress at the end of the coyote stand. And it's just not a minute into it. And I noticed this raccoon barreling probably as fast as a raccoon can run. <laughs> oh man, that's the baddest clip I'm going to ever see in my life. If you got bed, I'll pay the rabies shot. I don't know if that was self-defense or what that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was great. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. I hit it, I thought, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> it was running right at us. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> I can't, I'm bawling, I'm laughing so hard. That's going to be the baddest coon ever. <laughs> I've literally seen him kick that coon up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> 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 Did you see it? Man, that coon, I thought, should I shoot it before it hits the call or what? Oh man, I give myself a backache laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, that, that was good. <laughs> Wonder if Max stayed, stayed filming or, or went like, got scared and moved and pointed up in the sky. What do you think? Uh, Were you on it pretty good all the way? Yeah. Did you see all that? Did you see that? Yeah. Did you stay on it or did you get scared and <laughs> raise up out of it? I think I stayed on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kind of blocked out. <laughs> well, I was wondering what you're doing. I'm like, well, is we gonna make the coon stand right here? We're gonna go down to the corner and make it. I was like, well, I guess we're making it from right here. Yeah. I told Sean, I said, I feel like it's getting too light by the time we picked up and moved yeah. and got over there. And I have called them from here before with Jimmy a couple years ago. The two of them came together at yeah. about, to where, about where you were sitting. Yeah. And I don't know. That, that so is fast, weird. Really that don't thing ran think. right. It had right. no clue we were sitting there. It was just trying to get the heck out of here. That's going to make the baddest <laughs> coon clip of all times. I've already watched it. It is. <laughs> And I said, if you need rabies shots, I'll pay for them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 